Welcome to chapter 12, section 7, called Congruent Transformations. This is for Integrated Math 1 or IM1. So just to get started here uh, on the front screen, the first thing you should see is your due date. I don't see that on the, my teacher preview, but you will see it on your student screen. The second thing is the number of attempts. We always have unlimited attempts um, on homework, tests, and quizzes. Number of questions just tells you how many are on this particular assignment. Grading policy is always best score, so whichever attempt is the best one is one you get to keep. And partial credit is enabled, so if you answer one of two questions correctly, you get credit for the one question, or however many you answered correctly. This also, if I understand correctly, goes into parts of a question, too, if there's more than one answer within the question. There's partial on there, too. Uh, down here it says, please remember once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. And what that means is once I click start, uh, down here in the bottom right corner, there's going to be a submit assignment button. This um, is how we finish an assignment. So what that means on the last screen is you can't work on anything because Alex is going to lock all of your other assignments and even the resources until you click the submit assignment button. What it's trying to do is leave this attempt open for you and not close it. If you, you know, say close this screen and you're not done yet or you close your computer, it's trying to leave the attempt open for you. Uh, so just make sure that when you want to leave this screen, whether or not you finish, you click Submit Assignment so that Alex doesn't lock out all of your other assignments and resources. That's one huge reason to click that button. Another big one is that it actually affects the gradebook when you click that button so that um, your teacher can see what you've been working on and, you know, hopefully it will improve your grade there. Um, all right, on the side, we always have three resources. We have example or explanation. Sorry, explanation tells us that um, we're going to lose our current question attempt because it's going to give us the answer to this exact problem. So it's not going to give you the answers unless you come type them in. Um, example will give you something very similar to what it is we're looking at and kind of walk you through the idea here. Read through background information, especially if you see this section. Um, if you don't see the background information, it's kind of introducing something brand new. That's the idea. Um, so you can scroll through. Once you're happy with that example, you can close it. You can open another example so that you can see um, another one worked through if you need to. Um, you can also message your teacher directly from the screen so we know where to come help you because it attaches a picture of this problem on the email. So it's a very a good way to get specific help on a problem. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so when we're looking at these guys, um, and I can do this, um, hopefully, let's see, can I still use my lasso tool over here? That'd be very convenient. Um, Perfect. So I can use this guy, um, and I'm going to copy and paste it. So I have two of them. So I'm, I have two of them. I have one right on top of the other here. Um, and when we're talking about transformations, this makes it really easy to kind of visualize this. So a transformation, when we're talking about that, is just meaning that we're moving a figure around the, the plane that we're on. And in this case, the plane is my, my sketch pad here. Um, we're looking for rigid transformations, meaning that it's not going to actually change the sh size or the shape. Um, we do have a transformation that changes the size and shape, and that's called a dilation. And we'll start looking at that later. But right now, we're just looking at the three types of rigid transformations. So we have translation, if we're just looking at the words here. So a translation is when I take a figure and I move it around like this. So back and forth, up and down. Um, you don't actually translate diagonally like this. What that means is that I went sideways and then I went up like that. So if it looks like a diagonal trans, um, translation, it means that I did two translations. That's all it means. Um, so if I take this guy back, then I can also do a reflection. Um, I don't know if I can actually... Oh, I can shrink it. We don't want to shrink. That's that's a dilation. Um, I was kind of hoping. Darn it. I don't think. Let's see. Oh, it'll let me do that on that side. But um, I can't do the reflection tool with this piece here that I grabbed. That would be a little too convenient. Um, so I'm going to re-lasso this guy really quick like that, um, so that I can move this guy around again. Um, 
So the reflection would literally be if I was able to flip it over a line. Um, so a mirror image, just like we saw on that number one. Actually, if I go back, that's a perfect example of a mirror image. So I can see that it, it looks like I just flipped it over this line here. I'm reflecting it. So that's a reflection. A rotation is if I take this guy and I just turn it. So I'm not changing the triangle at all. I'm just rotating it around. I'm moving it. And then I can also translate it. I can also reflect it. So I can do all of these things. And it doesn't actually change the triangle. It just moves it around. So these are just, you know, the pieces we want to do. Um, and I know when we're talking about translations in class, I use the word slide. So it looks like I'm just sliding it around. So this one definitely looks like I just slid maybe the top one down or the bottom one up. However, we want to do that. This guy kind of looks like it's spinning. So if we can picture that kind of spinning, this is a rotation. Um, and it's spinning right around that point there so that it, it kind of always spins around that point. This one also looks like it's spinning right around that same center point. So that's another rotation. This one, um, it looks a little bit like a translation, like we could slide it right down. But if I slid this one right down into the other one, it wouldn't be perfect um, because it would be upside down. So this is what we call a mirror image or a reflection. All right, so we'll keep moving on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where we have to start using the Alex tools for these pieces to move these around. Um, so this wants um, in each part to use the tools to move the solid triangle, so this solid triangle, into the dash triangle. If it's not possible, if they're not exactly the same size and shape, then we say not possible. But um, what we want to do is we want to take this guy, and I know I want to scoot it over here, so I'm translating it over here. I'm just sliding it over. But now um, I don't want to say, oh, that's not possible yet. What I want to try to do is maybe rotate it because it looks like it's standing up a little bit more like that. Um, and then I also want to reflect it because I want to flip it around because it's going the opposite direction here. Um, so this is a vertical reflection, meaning it would flip down if I did that. I don't necessarily want to do that, but this one is a horizontal reflection, so it's going to go side to side. And it looks like I'm getting much closer to that triangle now. Once I get close enough, it will snap into place and I can just let go. So this works. I can be all done with that. This guy, I'm going to take it over here and it looks like I can definitely tell these are different shapes. They're both triangles, but they are definitely not the same size triangles. So when I try to line these up, the, the solid triangle is definitely bigger than the dotted one. So I'm going to go ahead and click not possible. Um, so we're just seeing, can I transform one into the other, meaning I'm not changing the size and shape. I know that's kind of what we think of when we say transformation, but these are rigid transformations. So I'm just moving it around the, the screen to see if I can go from one to the other. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on this one, but then we're gonna answer some questions about it. Um, one big thing as you're doing this, and I'm actually going to copy this over here because um, I can copy it a little bit nicer this way. Um, so let me grab this tool, because when you do this on Alex, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second, it's not going to bring the letters with it as far as the, the vertice names. Um, so it can be a little bit harder sometimes to see what's happening, because when I grab this guy, the letters stay behind. So if you notice, it's, it's just the triangle. So the name doesn't come with it, but I can definitely, you know, turn this guy maybe around. It looks like if I turn it and then I'm going to flip it or rotate it. And then I need to turn it a little bit more because I didn't turn it quite enough there. So that looks pretty close. And then I can scooch this over and that snaps right into place. So they are congruent triangles. They do fit right on top of each other. But if I wasn't paying attention there, I've, I've lost the lettering. Which letters go where? Um, so that's definitely something we need to be paying attention to as we're going. Um, so I'm going to kind of do my little lasso tool here so that I can, oop, turn it. Um, I'm going to use the pencil as I do this because I think that'll work a little nicer. Like that. I'm trying to do it with my um, other piece there. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste it. Um, and with this one, I definitely, I want to turn this over like this 
And the only bad thing is I haven't quite figured out exactly how to um, flip it over as far as rotate or not rotating, but um, doing the mirror image. I know I have the tool, but it doesn't really give me the ability. Let's see if I go like this and then, yeah, see if I turn the lasso tool on, it's not really going to work, but, ooh, okay, I can do that. Um, oops, why did it? Hey, dude, bring me back my triangle. Well, darn it, I'm going to have to go back and lasso it again. I don't know why I got rid of my triangle. I had it in the right spot there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this guy so that it's kind of in the right position there like that and then I'll turn on that mirroring tool so I can kind of see what's happening here well, let's see does that work out ooh that works out really nicely so now I can see I've drawn right on top of this line here right so when I started it was over here with the D so D and Y definitely go together so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna identify that already and then W would be over here with E. So I can even see that drawing over here and it's gonna go down to X. So W goes to E, W goes to E, and X, that was down here with the C, um, so X goes with C. Um, and again, I know you might not have this drawing tool to kind of see this visual happening, um, but we wanna kind of picture that as we're turning it. Um, and I know that's sometimes a little bit hard visually. It kind of depends on, on the style. You know, um, all of our brains are a little bit different with how we picture things. But as we're turning this and we're flipping it over, we want to make sure we're kind of paying attention to where the letters were. Um, and this one hopefully is not too bad. Um, I rotated it around so we can kind of see W is, is landing right here on E and Y, or sorry, W and D. Um, Oh no, I had it right, W and E, see? And I'm already mixing it up as I flip this around. Um, and then Y and, and D are landing on top of each other there. So um, it, can, it can be a little bit harder to visualize this, um, for sure. Um, and then I can go W, X, okay, W, X is E, C. And they even did it backwards, C, E, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it C, E, I would have done E, C, just to make sure that's in the correct order. Um, X, Y, C, D, and then W, Y, which is W and Y, which is E, D. And they did D, E. <laughs> Darn it. That bugs me a little bit. It's out of order. The segments, they're not as picky about the order. Um, it's the, when we actually state the congruency of the two triangles. Um, and you can even see that over here as I go, you know, if I said X, um, W, X, that would be this line here. And I can see that happening. WX is this line over here with this, this piece happening. Um, so this mirror tool is definitely pretty cool because it helps us see that happening. So are all three pairs of congruent angles and all three pairs of corresponding sides congruent? And we see that when they land right on top of each other, all of the pieces have to be congruent to each other. Um, so this is definitely going to be a yes. We, we know that one triangle is congruent to the other because they literally landed right on top of each other. Um, and then we were able to identify all three angles with all three sides, right? Or and all three sides. Um, so with this one, it says yes, and the triangles are not congruent. Well, that doesn't make sense. If all the pieces are congruent to each other, then the triangles would definitely be congruent. Um, so they're kind of being tricky with this. So if it's a yes, it's going to be because the triangles are congruent. If it's a no, it's going to be because they're not congruent. So they're giving you one of each answer to see if you know which one to choose. All right, so we're gonna keep going here.